everyone, and today what we're going to look at is sample size calculation. So if we're going to use statistical sampling, how exactly do we calculate sample size? So we use one formula that is customized firstly for control testing and then for substandard testing. So that formula is N which is our sample size, divided by our reliability factor, which we call R, divided by some sort of rate of misstatement. So we have a rate of deviation or misstatement. Now, in control testing, we use the term TDR, tolerable rate of deviation, tolerable deviation rate. And when we're substantive testing, we use uh, basically the materiality for the account, uh, which is the tolerable statement. divided by the book value of the account. Okay, so regardless of whether we're doing control testing, so this is control, and this is substantive, the first part of the formula is still the same, reliability factor. Second part of the formula, the denominator, depends on whether you're testing control or whether you are substantially testing. So, the next question is what the heck is the reliability factor? Alright, so the reliability factor is a number that we need that tells us about the desired level of assurance and the number of errors. Okay. So that reliability factor to be able to calculate that, we need to use a table. Okay? Um, and that table, now I'm looking at the Gay and Signet textbook from 2011, and I'm looking at table 11.2. Okay? Uh, but realistically, the reliability factor requires you to be able to have two pieces of information. So to be able to generate the reliability factor, you need firstly the desired level of assurance. Okay? Now, for control testing, you'll need the number of errors. Um, for substantive testing, you need the percentage. Okay? So for the reliability factor, you use your desired level of assurance. And that desired level of assurance is going to be anywhere from 80% to 99%. Now there's a reason there that we don't have 100% level of assurance, because if we're giving 100% of assurance, then we're actually going to need to be able to test the entire population, and so we won't actually be sampling. So 99% is the maximum that will go there. So when we're doing control calculations, uh, okay. uh, let's do it in two ways. So when we're looking at testing internal controls, and our other option is going to be substantive. Right. So when we're testing internal controls, to calculate my reliability factor, I'm going to need my desired level of assurance, and then the number of errors I think I'm going to expect to find. Okay, so the number of errors I think I'm going to expect to find. When I'm doing substantive testing, do you do uh, to gather the information on my reliability factor? I'm going to do something slightly different. Um, I'm going to use, uh, where is the information?
So to calculate our reliability factor when we're doing substandard testing, we need information on the risk of incorrect acceptance. All right. The risk of incorrect acceptance is the risk that will accept that the account is free from material misstatement when it really is not. So let's say that if I want to be, I use my desired level of assurance for standard testing. If my desired assurance, I'm just going to use the shorthand DA there, is 95%, then my risk of incorrect acceptance is going to be 5%. Okay. Now, so we use this reliability factor, and there are two tables that we'll use in Gay and Simnet. Uh, table 11.5, so in Gay and Simnet, table 11.5, and for controls in Gay and Simnet, we use table 11.2. Okay. Now, for my students, I would never expect them to be able to memorize these sorts of tables. If you needed to be uh, to use one of those tables in an examination situation, for example, I'd give you the table to use. All right. So the reliability factor is based on our desired level of assurance and information either about the number of errors or the risk of incorrect acceptance. And if we use one of those two tables, they will actually give us a reliability factor number that we're going to go back and use now calculation. So let's move on to the next part, which is the calculation. All right, so I already know that my sample size is equal to R divided by CDR for control. Or the standard testing R divided by tolerable misstatement divided by book value. Okay. Now, that's a bit of a funny equation there, but if you rearrange that equation, what you actually get is that equals R times book value divided by the tolerable misstatement. Okay. So all I've simply done is just rearrange the formula using algebra. Alright, so I have those two formulas. If I get my R, right, R comes from the same sorts of uh, places, the same formula. So how do you know what the tolerable rate of deviation is for control testing? So how do we find out this TDR? TDR means how many deviations you allow to go past the auditor before you say that control risk will need to increase. So is it 5, 10, 15? Um, if it's a percentage, right? so that could be 5%, 10%, 20%. Uh, what happens if you don't have the tolerable deviation rate as a percentage and instead you have a number of errors? So if you don't have, not have TDR as a percent, and instead, you have a number of deviations, okay, then we use one of the tables, either table 11.3 or 11.4, out of games in the 2011, this is the fourth edition, okay, revised. Uh, to be able to determine your sample sizes. All right. So if you don't have a number, uh, if, if, sorry, if you don't have um, the actual percentage, you can use, oh sorry, wrong table there. We use table 11.2, my bad, they're wrong table. All right. So in all of these, we're going to calculate a reliability factor a tolerable deviation rate to give us the number in the sample. When I'm doing my substantive testing, how's that going to work? Well, again, I'm going to go to that cash and the reliability factor. Where am I going to get the book value for the account? Well, that's typically the value of, of the account that you're auditing. So it'll say in the question, inventory is worth 100000 or 150000 
where does the tolerable misstatement information come from? Now, typically you'll have materiality at a couple of different levels. All right? You'll have materiality for the overall set of financial statements, and then you'll have smaller amounts for individual components of the financial statement. Okay? And that's going to be customized. Now, areas of higher control or inherent risk might have lower levels of materiality. So there'll be a materiality level for an individual account that we call the tolerable misstatement here. So if I know my book value, I know my tolerable misstatement, I've got my R, then I can calculate N my sample size. 